Hey guys, this is Randy from America's Parks. I don't know if you caught it, but about two months ago, I put up a video that listed my top 15 national parks. Thank you so much for catching that if you did and for the nice comments that you left below. But I thought I'd do something similar, but yet a little different. Many people, when they think of the national parks, all they think about are the big 62, as I call them, the Sequoias, the Grand Canyons, and the Yellowstones. But did you know that there are over 400 sites in the national park system? So I thought what I'd do in this video is list my top 15 national parks minus the big 62. So now we're talking about lake shores and seashores and, and monuments and historic places. So a couple things before we jump into the list. Number one, these are only the sites that I have personally visited. And I visited probably 200 plus out of the 400 sites. And number two, the standard, the criteria for this is based upon my personal enjoyment. This is a very subjective list, meaning your list could be completely different. So based upon my enjoyment at these specific parts, let's get rolling with the top 15. Though these sites, beyond the Big 62 as I call them, do not receive the same attention, acclaim, and visitation, they do offer amazing splendor and history that our government believed was worth protecting. For example, be blessed to stand within a few feet of the Liberty Bell, climb to the crown of the Statue of Liberty, watch a lightning storm at Devil's Tower, meet the original Rosies from the Second World War, observe Mount Rushmore lit up at night, stroll through the home of Abraham Lincoln, and fold a flag at Fort McHenry. Visit the Washington Monuments. Walk the very path of the first aviation flight and learn how to work a lasso in Montana. So eliminating the big 62 national parks and basing this on the criteria of my personal enjoyment in the parks that I have personally visited, let's jump right into our countdown, starting with number 15. Welcome to Canyon de Chelly National Monument. Located in northeastern Arizona in the heart of the Navajo Nation is this incredible monument that covers over 27,000 square miles. Both the north and south rim self-guided drives, each more than 30 miles long, takes visitors past 10 overlooks and offers expansive views of the surrounding canyons, gorges, and valleys. Access to the canyon floor is restricted, but visitors are allowed to travel into the canyon only when accompanied by a park ranger or authorized Navajo guide. The only exception to this rule is the park's major trail, the White House Ruin Trail, that switched back some 600 feet into the canyon. Considering the most beautiful national park vistas that I've ever observed, the view of Spider Rock would be included in my top five. Number 14. America's Parks is bringing the heat in New Mexico at Bandelier National Monument. Named after a Swiss-American anthropologist, Adolf Bandelier, Bandelier is one of the most popular national park sites in the state of New Mexico. Located in the beautiful Jemez Mountains, the monument's intention is to preserve ruins from the ancestral Pueblo people that lived there roughly 1,000 years ago. They built homes and carved others into the stone walls. Some 500 years after arriving, the people in this community then moved on from this area to Pueblos along the Rio Grande due to a severe drought and the inability to be supported by the land. When I was there back in 2019, I viewed restoration taking place using the same materials as the original inhabitants. The main loop trail takes visitors through many of the excavated sites. Extending from there is the Alcove House Trail that leads to the famous Alcove House located 140 feet above the canyon floor. This site is reached only by wooden ladders and stone stairs. Number 13. I'm with my lovely wife, Julie, and we are here at the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area. Sure, I put this on the list because it's close to my home and one that I frequently visit, but as a local resident of New Jersey, in my humble opinion, this is the prettiest part of our state, even when you consider our beautiful shoreline. The area is specifically along the middle section of the Delaware River, designated also as a national park, forming the border between New Jersey and Pennsylvania. The activities to enjoy in these 67,000 acres are plentiful. Over 100 miles of hiking trails, mountain climbing, scenic roadways, historic villages, and 40 miles of the Delaware River, which accommodates kayaking, rafting, canoeing, and floating. 
Some of my personal favorites are visiting the waterfalls. The tallest waterfall in New Jersey and the tallest waterfall in Pennsylvania are right here in the Delaware Gap. I also love hiking to the top of Mount Tammany, a 1,526-foot peak with incredible summit views. Number 12. We're on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And believe it or not, this is one of the 400 plus national park sites. Stretching 469 miles, the Blue Ridge Parkway runs mainly along the spine of the Blue Ridge in the Appalachian Mountains connecting Shenandoah and Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Travel through six designated regions to witness flowering shrubs in the spring and superb leaf colors in the fall. Construction on this highway began in 1935 and was mainly completed by 1966. When the final extensions were finished, this all-American road took over 53 years to complete. Land on both sides of the road is owned and maintained by the National Park Service, and it is America's longest linear park. The parkway is prized for its relaxing pace and scenic beauty as it reveals a cross-section of the Appalachian mountain culture and history. Number 11. This is the Mojave National Preserve. Located in between Los Angeles and Las Vegas is 1.6 million acres of untamed desert sandwiched between interstates 15 and 40 in Southern California. While parts of the preserve may be seen with a standard automobile, high clearance vehicles are recommended and needed for many of the remote locations. As for popular stops, begin your trip at the Kelso Depot which opened in 1924, which is a renovated train station that now serves as a visitor center and museum. Drive about 42 miles southeast and visit the famous Kelso Dunes, standing nearly 700 feet high. If adventurous, climb the dunes and listen for their famous singing sound. Also in the preserve are cinder cone volcanoes, spring wildflowers, lava tubes, and massive Joshua tree forests. My favorite stops are exploring the abandoned mines that are remotely scattered throughout this area. Number 10. We want to welcome you to Chiricahua National Monument. This is one national monument that really surprised me. It looked much unlike the desert landscape that I was expecting in Arizona. The terrain was incredibly unusual and beautiful. During the mid-1800s, these mountains provided a refuge for the famous Indian chiefs Cochise and Geronimo of the Apache tribe, whose descendants still inhabit the surrounding area. Nicknamed the Wonderland of Rocks, Chiricahua was established in 1924 to protect the extensive rock spires known as hoodoos and balancing rocks that remain from an immense volcanic eruption. Most of the rocks are gray or brown, often covered with bright green lichen. The park is remote, with the nearest town of Wilcox over 30 miles away. There are 17 miles of day-use hiking trails. When we were there, we hiked through the beautiful Echo Canyon. Number nine. Welcome to the lava beds, everybody. <laughs> Located in northeastern California, lava beds, in my opinion, is the least mentioned national site in my top 15. Not expecting much when we visited in 2017, we were pleasantly surprised by the enjoyment we had exploring the various lava tubes, the largest concentration of lava tubes in all of North America. The tubes were created when the hot lava flowed downhill. The top layer cooled and crusted over, insulating the rest of the lava and forming the tubes. In the visitor's guide, there are lava caves available for every degree of difficulty. From easy trails with minimal stairs and electric lighting to the most challenging caves that require tight squeezes and crawling. 25 caves here have marked entrances and developed trails. If you explore these caves, be sure to have a good flashlight and protective equipment for your head, knees, and elbows. Number eight. Welcome to Oregon Pipe. Located on the Mexican border in the extreme southwest corner of the state of Arizona lies this rugged and untamed national monument. Though the 517 square mile site is home to 26 species of cacti, the monument was established to protect primarily the Oregon Pipe Cactus, where the bulk of its U.S. population resides. This cactus can live up to 150 years. If you visit, you'll be treated to amazing trails, beautiful night skies, and rich cultural history. However, also be prepared for the ferocious heat, freezing nights, and harsh terrain. Just north of the monument is the unincorporated community of Y. To the south is the town of Lukeville, Arizona, right on the Mexican border. Oregon Pipe Cactus is the Sonoran Desert at its finest. Number seven. Up in Northern Michigan, we want to welcome you to Sleeping Bear Dunes. 
National Lakeshore. This lakeshore in northern Michigan, not far from my wife's childhood home, is a frequent destination for us to visit. Lush forests, clear inland lakes, wetlands, a variety of plants and wildlife, towering sand dunes for which the park is named, coastal villages, and a rich maritime and recreational history make Sleeping Bear Dunes an incredible tourist attraction. It's located at the Little Finger area of the Michigan Mitten and has 35 miles of Lake Michigan shoreline. In 2011, the area won the title the most beautiful place in America from Good Morning America. Take a boat ride out to the two adjacent islands, North and South Manitou. On South Manitou Island is a lighthouse that was active from 1871 to 1958. I was blessed to be granted a personal tour of the lighthouse keeper's residence. Also a lot of fun of the dune climb, sledding in the winter and great workouts in the summer. Yet be careful, the dune at Overlook Number 9 stands 450 feet above the lake. It's a steep and long round trip. The tempting desire to run down the white beach sand is occasionally met with the inability to return to the top. Number six. We're in Southern Florida. Welcome to Big Cypress. This one is dear to my heart for many reasons. In 2020, I volunteered to help control the invasive pythons that are destroying the ecosystem. Located in Southern Florida, 45 miles west of Miami and adjacent to the Florida Everglades National Park, Big Cypress is the home to tropical and temperate plant communities and a diversity of wildlife, including the American alligator and elusive Florida panther. Originally and currently, this place is home to the Miccosukee and Seminole tribes. Established in 1975 as our nation's first national preserve, Big Cypress is a natural and undisturbed environment that takes you back in time. With limited visitors and over 700,000 acres to check out, there's much to do here from hiking to canoeing to camping if you're willing to do your research and are adventurous in spirit to explore. Number five. Oregon National Historic Trail. With a love for history, few places fascinate me more than the Oregon Trail. Adopted in 1981, the National Park Service interprets and has set aside key locations along the 2,170 mile east-west wagon route that begins in Independence, Missouri and stretches all the way to Oregon. Some noticeable landmarks are Courthouse Rock, Jail Rock, Chimney Rock, Scotts Bluff, Fort Laramie, and Register Cliff. Originally, the trail was used by fur traders and missionaries, but soon became the super highway of westward expansion. The journey, at times met with disease, accidents, Native American attacks, would last between five to six months, but could take a year to complete. Number four. It's Christmas time. We got the whole family here at Cape Cod, National Seashore. Not only did my family vacation here in the 70s, but I too had brought my family to Cape Cod to enjoy its varied activities and natural beauty. It became a national seashore in 1961 under President JFK with the goal of protecting over 43,000 acres that make up most of the curving peninsula between Chatham and Provincetown, Massachusetts. There are marshes, forested ponds, wild cranberry bogs, historic structures, coastal bluffs, and six incredible beaches, a couple of which have been listed as top beaches of the U.S. over the years. There are a few lighthouses and distinct hiking trails. Native Americans began using the land thousands of years ago, and in 1690, the pilgrims were originally forced to land here, but eventually chose to settle in Plymouth. Nearby Provincetown has quaint shops, excellent food, and a one-mile causeway or breakwater that takes you directly to the tip of the Cape. Number three. We are excited to spend two days here at Cape Hatteras National Seashore. 1984. 2004, 2018, and there's never been a disappointing trip to Cape Hatteras. Established as our first national seashore in 1953 and dedicated in 1958, portions of the Outer Banks of North Carolina are preserved from Bodie to Ocracoke Island, stretching over 70 miles. Often nicknamed the Graveyard of the Atlantic for its treacherous currents, shoals, and storms, Cape Hatteras is now viewed as home for arguably the best fishing, surfing, and prettiest dunes on the East Coast. Explore the three lighthouses and visit the U.S. life-saving station while enjoying one of the top natural shorelines in the country. The seashore can be reached by road or by ferry. A special treat is to camp along the ocean under the starry sky as you fall asleep to the relaxing sound of the waves and recurrent glow of the Hatteras Lighthouse. Number two. 
Golden Gate National Recreation Area. In 2019, this was the most visited national park site with over 15 million visitors. Located in the area surrounding the Golden Gate Bridge in and around San Francisco, Golden Gate encompasses 19 distinct ecosystems. Learn about the indigenous cultures and the growth of a metropolitan city. Hiking on the 250 plus trails around the beautiful Pacific coast promises breathtaking vistas, immense redwoods, and wildlife. Also in the park is the Bonita Lighthouse, military installations from gun batteries built in the early 1900s, to the Cold War Nike missile sites. The park also contains famous tourist attractions such as Muir Woods National Monument and Alcatraz Prison. Fort Point National Historical Site is also in the vicinity. So much beauty, so much variety, so much to enjoy. So before we get to my number one selection, in addition to all the parks I mentioned at the beginning, let me provide an honorable mention to the following. Devil's Post Pile National Monument in California. El Malpais National Monument, New Mexico. Cape Lookout National Seashore, North Carolina. Lake Mead National Recreation Area, Nevada and Arizona. Boston National Historic Park, Massachusetts. Appalachian National Scenic Trail, Maine to Georgia. Assateague National Seashore, Maryland. Ross Lake National Recreation Area, Washington. Natural Bridges National Monument, Utah. Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore, Michigan, and Point Reyes National Seashore, California. Now for number one. Today we're in Pennsylvania, at Gettysburg National Military Park. As I've discussed the sites that have brought me the greatest memories, it's impossible to exclude the national battlefields. Enjoyment, of course, now becomes an inaccurate word. Words such as meaningful, sober, and reflective would be more fitting. For all the national military and memorial sites that are preserved from the Indian Wars, to the American Revolution, to the Civil War, to the overseas conflicts, to Pearl Harbor, to the 911 tragedies, I have chosen Gettysburg as number one to represent all of them. Nothing in this world is more valuable than a human life. And as beautiful as all the national parks are, nothing is more beautiful than a person. These memorials remember the countless who died, some famous, some considered insignificant, but all of them believed in a cause or lost their lives by being in the wrong place at the wrong time, experiencing the epitome of fear and courage. Gettysburg primarily comes to mind because it was the largest and the bloodiest battle in the Civil War that lasted the first three days of July 1863. It resulted in over 51,000 soldiers killed, wounded, captured, or missing. It is considered the turning point of the war, and it is the location where perhaps the greatest president gave the greatest speech in the Gettysburg Address. All the national parks are preserved because they are treasured grounds, but these are hallowed grounds that teach us our most valuable lessons. So when we exclude the big 62 national parks, these are my top 15 most memorable parks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more national park videos and feel free to share your favorites below.